Welcome back to another episode of Enlace News. I'm Sarah Cervera. And I'm Lainey Perez. And we're here to present you with campus and community news from San Antonio. No one wants to hear they only have a couple of months to live because of a failing organ. Hundreds of people this year alone will be placed on a long waiting list in hopes of receiving an organ transplant before it's too late. Our reporter, Edma Science found the story of a donor and a lung transplant survivor. I found out I only had 18 months to live. So it's a shock. I mean, so you start, that's when the time starts ticking. Dot De La Rosa is a lung transplant recipient who almost lost her life to idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. After the transplant, Dot has volunteered with the Texas Organ Sharing Alliance to share the importance of organ donation. My life has been spent on bringing awareness to organized tissue don donation wherever I can, because I don't know how to honor my donor except for by sharing my story everywhere I go. Dot has been an example of a successful organ recipient for over 10 years. Dot works with TOSA to better educate the people of Southside San Antonio. We're close to us here in South Texas because a lot of our family members, unfortunately, they have diabetes and a lot of them are gonna need a kidney transplant, you know. Amanda DeLeon is an example of one of those donors who had a family member in need of an organ, the family member being her own father, who was diagnosed with kidney cancer. I'm a living kidney donor. Uh, it was one of the best decisions that I've ever made in my life. Um, it was a very humbling experience. DeLeon's father was again diagnosed with kidney cancer and passed away two years ago. However, this did not stop her from speaking on the importance of organ donation. Like, had he not had that kidney transplant, we don't know how long he would have lived. Probably not five years. And so, whatever time he was given after that transplant was a blessing. The Texas Organ Sharing Alliance and De Leon share their stories with San Antonio to help spread the importance of organ donor registration. And I do want to mention that our registry is now at 13.5 million in the state of Texas. And people always say, wow, well, that just sounds like a lot. Don't you have enough donors? And the fact is, we don't. I mean, in a state of 29 million, we still have a long way to go. If you would like to become an organ donor, sign up at your DMV or go to DonateLifeTexas.org. The pandemic has affected our community in many ways, including the loss of jobs, having or leaving many lost and unable to find a stable source of income. Stephanie Rodriguez shows us how one San Antonio nonprofit is helping the unemployed get back on their feet. How are we going to pay our bills? How are we going to uh, get out of this situation? Am I able to be able to walk again? SA Hope Center, located in the west side of San Antonio, opened its doors to many unemployed members like Roy. Roy Portillo says his tragic car accident left him bedbound and unemployed. I was injured and I suffered back injuries and I was out of work for a year. The Texas Tribune says 1.4 million jobs have been lost since COVID-19 and the unemployment rate has peaked at 12.9 percent. Portillo's incident occurred during the pandemic, making it difficult to find a job. The mentoring center has given Portillo the opportunity to work as a warehouse manager. Roy, along with SA Hope, have helped the unemployed community with food security during COVID-19. Portillo says that on average, SA Hope has helped anywhere from, I would say about um, anywhere from 800 to 1,500, more or less. Not only do they provide food, but they also help with clothing, shoes, and toiletries. Their family outreach centers, in partnership with Arms of Hope, also offer case manager assistance. Communication coordinator Elisa Martinez goes beyond to provide immediate assistance. We want to get to know everyone that comes through our doors that needs assistance. Um, so we build that relationship, but we still provide that food and clothing, emergency assistance as well. Um, but we also want to help them fill in the gaps, you know, to help them be self-sustainable. SA Hope Center encourages unemployed members affected by COVID-19 to seek help. For further assistance, call 210-732-3776. The state of Texas leads the nation with legislation targeting the LGBTQ plus community. The most recent bill passed by the Texas state legislator impacts directly LGBTQ plus youth playing sports. Miranda Rodriguez talked to a mother actively fighting this new legislation so her child and the LGBTQ plus community of Texas can live a normal life. So it, it was never about sports. House Bill 25 was signed into law in October 2021 and is currently in effect. 
This law requires students in public schools to play on sports teams based on the sex listed on the birth certificate, banning transgender and non-binary children from competing on sports teams that align with their gender identity. What they're trying to do is erode uh, the, uh, the existence of the LGBT plus community. A mother's priority is to protect her child. Annalise Cothron is the mother of a non-binary athlete. They will be impacted by this legislation. You know, right now they're nine. As they get older, it can mean that they just don't have access to public services. And frankly, those are public services that I've paid for as a taxpayer. Those are public services that, that my child and every transgender child is owed. And it makes it really difficult for them to be able to access that moving forward. Excluding transgender and non-binary students from sports will deprive our youth from developing vital teamwork and leadership skills. Um, think about the isolation and the exclusion uh, that, that youth, we're talking about kids, uh, K through 12, that aren't able to play with sports with the, the gender that they identify with now. The Texas Senate has attempted to pass more than 70 anti-LGBTQ plus bills, 40 of which target transgender and non-binary youth. This law will have a significant impact on the mental health of these children. The Trevor Project has received over 10,000 crisis contacts from youth in Texas since the beginning of this year. You know, the Trevor Project has taken a special interest in Texas, given that we're leading the country in anti-LGBTQ plus legislation. And they saw a 150% increase in calls to their suicide hotline as a direct result of these bills. Now, the first thing I would say to, uh, to our trans youth um, is that we are here for you, we support you. Um, and we won't stop fighting for you. Who doesn't like Tejano music and food? I know, I love both. Well, if you find yourself at downtown San Antonio at the Tejano Music Awards, you'll definitely get to enjoy savory food and live music. Irma Sainz is at the event talking to multiple artists and she tells you how you can support local Tejano artists while also having a great time. Hi, my name is Irma Sainz and I'm from Alaska News and I'm here downtown San Antonio where they are having the Tejano Awards Fanfare Festival. My grandma told me that she said if you're going to sing to sing then don't do it but if you're going to sing with your heart then sing. So that's why I think I, I love performing and singing. The TTMA is a nonprofit organization whose purpose is to promote excellence in the Tejano music industry. The event opens to the public annually, and all ages gather together to hear multiple Tejano singers. The event usually provides four stages with scheduled musicians playing simultaneously, filling the market square with live music. Multiple musicians attended the event, including 19-year-old award-winning Isabel Marie Sanchez, who started her career with her album New Girl in Town that was released in March 2016 when she was just 13 years old. And I think it's super important that we keep all of our young people still in tune with, with our Mexican heritage and also still be, be very proud of being American. So. Liz Garcia is a TTMA award winner for Best New Female and an up-and-coming Tejano Norteño singer, songwriter based in San Antonio. She started with her first album, Había Una Vez, that was released in October of 2018. Along with amazing talent, the square is filled with booths and stands that have amazing food and Tejano merchandise. At the event, it's not uncommon to see people buying their favorite drink or food to enjoy during the hot day. For more information about TTMA or to see past artist awards, visit TejanoMusicAwards.com. I'm Roma Science with the Lassa News. Every year, Palo Alto College celebrates PacFest, one of the events for Fiesta. Our reporter, Lily Celeste Reimer Buckert, has been talking to event organizers to tell, the, tell us the importance of the events and the big surprise guests can look forward to. The spirits in San Antonio are high in the spring as the city's favorite time of year makes a major comeback. Yes, we're talking about Fiesta. Fiesta San Antonio sweeps the Alamo City with confetti, flower crowns, papel picado, and plenty of Fiesta medals. One of the premier Fiesta events is PacFest, hosted by Palo Alto College on the city's south side. The festival is a family-friendly event with live music, an annual grill-down competition, and a kid zone. 
Today we're taking a look at the importance, impact, and history of PackFest. We have this um, program called Educate South. And so with Educate South, we are working with all of our ISD partners here in the South Side to really educate our community. In addition to benefiting Educate South, Dr. Garza says that PacFest is the largest student organization fundraiser and PacFest attendance directly supports Palo Alto College student organizations. Braylon, a student at both Palo Alto and STEM Early College High School, said his family took him to PacFest every year before the pandemic. He said that PacFest and what it stands for mean a lot to him. Well, it means a lot because one, I'm the second in my generation just to go to college and my parents were the first and like they encouraged me to do college and get there. Dr. Garza said that PacFest started as an event called Pachanga roughly 20 years ago. It has since turned into something bigger and has now been an official fiesta event for almost a decade. Dr. Garza said it is quote, evolved, now featuring things like a social media zone and to end the night, an impressive fireworks show. You come out, you're not only gonna have a great time, you're gonna be st supporting our students and our community and this amazing program that we have called Educate South. Lily Celeste Reimer Bucker, Enlace News. Sarah, can you imagine going to school in San Antonio while living in a different city? No, that really sounds hard. Well, our very own reporter, Ashley Sosa, tells us the story of a Texas A&M University San Antonio student who owns her own business and goes to school in San Antonio while living in Austin. Let's take a look. Kimberly Nieto Sr., majoring in sociology at Texas A&M San Antonio, has become a business owner while also being a full-time college student. La razón por la cual yo decidí estudiar sociología es porque desde chiquita he estado muy interesada en cómo trabaja el mundo. Cómo se y cómo se forma. Like many others, Nieto was impacted by the global pandemic and had to step up to the plate to provide for her family. This motivated her to start up two local businesses in the Austin area. Nieto had to learn to manage two businesses and also turn in assignments on time. I think it's a great battle I've had with the business. While many students would rather have in-person classes, Nieto thinks otherwise. La escuela me dio la oportunidad de tomar todas mis clases virtuales, so entonces puedo estar en Austin mientras estu mientras estudio en San Antonio. No tengo que ir físicamente allá, entonces eso me hace muy feliz porque puedo estar aquí con mi familia y puedo estar en el negocio y también puedo estudiar. One of Nieto's businesses is located near the University of Texas at Austin. This allows Nieto to encourage students to pursue higher education and also maintain a side hustle. Y esa es mi motivación día a día. Digo, tú puedes, Kimberly, tú puedes. Haz esto por tu familia, haz esto por tu novia. O sea, tú puedes. O sea, hay que luchar juntos, hay que lograr lo que queremos. Y es un sueño, se puede decir un sueño americano que se hizo realidad. This is Ashley Sosa in Lawson News. Theater is such an amazing art, don't you think, Lainey? I agree, Sarah, but the pandemic has stopped a lot of performances because of the good of the need to social distance. Clarissa Martinez tells us the story of a local theater student who would not let anything stand in her way of acting, not even a global pandemic. Hard to raise these children the right way. For Southwest High School senior Giselle Sandoval. Theater means family. Sandoval has been in theater for all four years of high school. For her, it's been an escape from reality. Whenever I come into theater, I feel like I can kind of just like take off all the shells that are on, on me, and I'm just able to be myself and get vulnerable on stage. The coronavirus pandemic hit in the middle of Sandoval's sophomore year. This limited the school's performances and the way they could perform during competitions. It kind of hurt knowing like, oh, I really wish that I was able to have like the full experience and not just like bits and pieces of it because I know that um, we weren't able to do things to the best of our abilities or even get the chance to do things to our, the best of our abilities. Sandoval said she's seen less participation in the arts since the pandemic. The Las Casas Foundation has also seen less applicants for their scholarship and their programs. We really had to sort of, I think, you know, hold people's hands and make exceptions more than we've ever had to before. We knew that that was going to be lower because we knew that kids were burned out of, you know, doing all of their classes on Zoom, sitting in front of a computer all day. Sandoval hopes after finishing her education to teach middle school theater instead of performing to inspire others and keep the art alive. 
I more so want to show other people how theater makes me feel rather than just like doing my own thing by myself. Martinez says theater is not limited to performing because the possibilities are endless with the skills that you learn. You could, I think, find out that you actually prefer writing or directing to performing or, you know, like there's, you just, there's so many directions that you could go and you never know what's going to give you that inspiration. Despite having a limited experience, Sandoval says she wouldn't change a thing. If you're doing the best you can do in a situation, then that's the best you can do. Thanks for watching. Be safe, everyone, and stay tuned for more campus and community news.